All right, lovely. Well, let's get started. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining. I'm Liz Eggleston, and I run Course Report, which is a resource for students who are choosing a coding boot camp. If you haven't looked at Course Report yet, this is my one shameless plug. I do it in all of our videos. You can use our directory to find schools that fit your learning style. You can check out our blog for interviews with students and alumni like this one um, from boot camps around the world. We've got application tips, classroom tours, all of the things. So if you are researching coding boot camps, then you are undoubtedly thinking about what your career will look like after a boot camp. We talk to, you know, huge banks and, you know, the tech giants that hire boot camp grads. And we also see boot camp grads taking jobs at startups and smaller companies and moving into leadership positions really quickly there. It really runs the gamut. And, you know, the company that you choose to work for after a boot camp really depends on your personal goals. So today we are joined by four bootcamp alumni who all took different paths after they graduated from Codesmith, which is a coding bootcamp in New York and LA. Now they have a really solid remote bootcamp. Um, so yeah, four alumni, and we're going to talk to all of them. So I want to introduce everyone really quick. Vessi went to Codesmith in October 2019 and is now a software engineer at IBM. Nock and uh, went to Codesmith in May 2020 and is now a software engineer at Byte Dance. Uh, Joelle went to Codesmith in May 2019 and is now a software engineer at Ready. And Gio attended Codesmith in May 2020 and is now a software engineer at Arcadia. So, you know, everyone on this panel has graduated in the last couple of years and is already kind of really, you know, into their career. So I've got a ton of questions for all about the differences between working at a powerhouse, like established company versus a startup with a lot of potential for growth. So I want to hop into it. Um, but let's start with a little introduction. Could you each of you just introduce yourself and tell us what you were up to before Codesmith and why you chose Codesmith out of all of the boot camps? Hi, everyone. Um, I am Vessi, uh, as you heard. Before Codesmith, I was very much in the nonprofit world. Um, I would say at the intersection of fundraising and also ed tech. Um, so I was responsible for a couple pieces of software, but everything I did was mostly on the surface level. Uh, and I did want to be on the other side, mostly on the builder level, um, so or the builder side. So here come Codesmith. Um, I thought uh, the residency was definitely a good choice for a professional transition for someone like me um, who wanted to be on the other side. And initially, um, I also went to the Hard Parts workshops, and the community seemed like a great community. Um, so that was one of the reasons that I went with Codesmith as well. Love to hear that. Did anyone else go to the JavaScript, the Hard Parts workshops before? Everyone did? It's a great, like, kind of on ramp. And um, Gio, do you want to go next? What were you doing before Codesmith? Yeah, sure. So um, before Codesmith, um, I was in the marketing world for seven years. I graduated from NYU and I had an internship in marketing, even though I studied architecture. Mm -hmm. And um, the internship ended up being a full time job offer. So I was like, oh, might as well just take this. Um, no stress and like looking for jobs. But next thing you know, seven years pass. And I'm like, what am I doing with my life? Do I even like marketing? Um, I did enjoy like the project management aspect of it. I did work on their website on the marketing side and kind of like Vessi, I wanted to be on the builder side. And uh, the thing that helped me pick Codesmith when I started thinking about career change was a friend of mine, Rudy, um, did Codesmith around the time I think Joel was there. Um, and he, you know, he graduated and got a good job. And I was like, okay, that gave me the push. Um, and as well as going to, like Vessi said, the hard parts, the easy parts. I did the, um, the prep course. I did all of it <laughs> just so I could feel ready too. And I just liked the instructors, how they taught. And that confirmed it for me that I wanted to do Codesmith. Very smart. Joel, how about you? What were you up to before Codesmith? Hey guys, uh, I'm Joel. Uh, before Codesmith, uh, I was actually a graduate student. Uh, I was also studying marketing. And uh, with all of the, I guess, just the coursework itself, I started to realize that every company I was researching or doing a project on had to be a tech company. 
And uh, I think that just kind of sparked my interest. Uh, I was in the last semester of my MBA, and I remember I was studying HTML, CSS, and some JavaScript on the side while, uh, while I was going through it. Um, and once I graduated, I immediately just had that switch in my head to just go, just go straight for, for tech, you know, and, and try it. I, I have nothing to lose. I'm still a student and I'm still a, I, I still have that mentality. So why not uh, continue to learn and grow? So that's actually what I did. And uh, I found out about Codesmith uh, rather late. I, I would say um, I, I, was, I went through another bootcamp prior to Codesmith. And when I found out about Codesmith and I went to a hard parts, I realized how much more information there was under the hood that I needed to learn. And I think that sparked my interest, and uh, th and that was it. I, I studied for 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 Codesmith and, and and went through the program. Hey, I am not. Um, so uh, before Codesmith, I was a full time pharmacist, and uh, I did keep working as a part time pharmacist even throughout um, the time I was at Codesmith um, every other Sunday. Um, but I chose Codesmith because I always wanted to try coding, but um, I never really had the chance to. Um, and I learned from my friend who went to another bootcamp that there is such thing as bootcamps. And that's when I started looking into different bootcamps and I saw the SER reports about Codesmith. And that's when um, I started looking at JavaScript part parts videos and um, learned that this is the, the, the place that I, I, I wanted to be. And that's why I came here. Love that you started with SER. Those are just for anyone watching. That stands for Council on Integrity and Results Reporting. So it's like outcomes reports. Uh, about what what graduates are up to after they actually graduate from Codesmith. Um, very cool. Okay, I love that everybody kind of had maybe a little surface level tech experience, taught themselves a little bit, did the intro course, Java, the JavaScript, the hard parts um, with Codesmith. So then did you, did anyone find it like particularly, would you say it was hard to get into Codesmith? Was it easy because you were doing that um, intro course with them already? Uh, how did you find the application process just really quickly? Um, I guess I could jump in on this one first. Um, I think Codesmith is known to have like a harder to entry into the immersive program, which is also really good because it makes sure you're in a good place to start the bootcamp, um, which I also like that. Um, they're like actually vetting the people they're letting in and making sure like you're setting setting them up for success by making sure you're at this level because um, um, yeah through the hard parts and it's not even just going to the hard parts once you, you have to go over and over to make sure these things you learn are so, uh, solidified in your head and you have a mental model so I would say it's not the easiest to get into but with practice and diligence and studying um, you um, they give you chances uh, to get in. <laughs> yeah, Bessie is the one that interviewed me into Codesmith, actually. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. I love that a couple of you, like, heard about the boot camp from a friend, too. That can be, like, a really great way to kind of understand if it's the right program for you. Um, Nox, so you and Gio both attended Codesmith in 2020. So I'm assuming that was remotely and during this very tumultuous uh, last year with COVID-19. So what was the experience like learning remotely and learning online? I can go first. Um, I believe we were the first cohort to join fully remotely. And this was back when we didn't know how long COVID was going to last. So I even considered delaying joining Codesmith to later, but um, um, I just did it because I had already quit my job already uh, and I was ready to um, uh, fully uh, become uh, immersed in the program and um, study. And But looking back, it couldn't have been better because um, I didn't have to commute and I, I could have spent more time um, learning the concepts and finishing off my projects. Um, so it was a very good time. And, and I, I didn't expect us to be able to become so close, close with each other uh, in our cohort, um, even with uh, the remote setting. But we, we were and we were able to and we still are in contact with each other. Uh, we still fully support each other in uh, other job processes and everything. So it was good. Yeah, I agree with Nock. Me and Nock were in the same cohort, and he was actually, like, that was the thing I was nervous about. I was super excited about 
being in Cosmith in person because I saw the office, I saw everyone like getting along, talking to each other in person, uh, making friends like that. So I was excited for that. So I was a little bummed when COVID did happen. And like Knox said, I thought we didn't know how long COVID would be. So I'm like, oh, maybe by halfway through the program, we'll get to be back in person. Um, famous last words. But um, yeah, but uh, ended up being a lot better than it exceeded my expectations. Like it was um, uh, making friends was actually not too bad. Nock was actually the first person that reached out to me and just say hi. And like, we became close friends since then. Um, oh. And then also it's just like, yeah, you didn't have to worry about the commuting in the morning. You could focus more on studying after classes were done. And uh, everyone became really close over um, Zoom somehow that when we meet in person, it seems like you're there. it's the same person, it's the same personality. So it's, it's been a, it was a good experience. That's good to hear. And Vessie and Joelle, did you each go to Codesmith in New York or LA? You want to go ahead, Vessie? Go ahead. New York. <laughs> um, You're both, both, in, both in New York. Yes. Amazing. Okay, cool. Wonderful. All right. So, I, I mean, everyone here, we know, spoiler alert, you're all working in tech now as, you know, developers, engineers. That's awesome. So obviously, like, you know, Codesmith did work for you in that way. But could you just think about like maybe your biggest challenge at Codesmith? Like, was this an easy process? Has this been, you know, a simple, like smooth kind of process into, you know, changing your career into software engineering? And if not, like, what was your biggest roadblock or challenge? And how did you kind of face that throughout the last year? Big I'll question. Yeah, I'll take that one over. I, I think I, I come in with a little bit uh, of a unique experience coming from a different boot camp. I think the, uh, the biggest mental block was um, the imposter syndrome. A anytime that uh, I didn't understand something, uh, I, I think it's very, it's very easy for you to um, get down on yourself, especially when you've had prior experience coming from a different boot camp, and, and you should know this. And I think that that's uh, something that I didn't give myself a lot of time for. And uh, whenever I speak with anyone going through a boot camp or uh, looking to study and learn, I, I, I definitely stress the the compassionate side and being kind to yourself and being kind to everyone around you. I think that's the that was the hardest thing for, for me to wrap my head around considering, uh, you know, I should know this. I've, I've, I've gone through a program like this before. Um, but in reality, sometimes uh, things click in different ways. And looking back on it now, I've, I've used those strategies even at work as well to just be kind and compassionate when learning new uh, skills. So I, I think overall, it was not an easy process. Uh, but once you learn how to be compassionate and kind and uh, work with your fellow classmates, because we're, we're all going through it together, uh, it became a lot easier of, of, a, of a journey. I can talk a little bit about um, how I felt. Um, and that's not necessarily just Codesmith, but I would say uh, the field in general, I think there is such a vastness of information and roads that you can take. And for me, that is a little bit of a challenge. It's also a perk of the field, right? Like you can always keep learning. You can always, if you decide something is not good for you, go in a different direction. But me personally, um, I enjoy knowing stuff and knowing how to do stuff or, you know, just that feeling of not necessarily being out there and like having no idea of what's going on. And sometimes the field can feel like that. So we think just maybe a little bit to what Joel just said too, uh, going to the kindness of, okay, as long as you're doing the best you can be doing, um, you're actually going to be fine. But it's just that enormousness of, you know, information out there. Kindness and compassion while you're, while you're learning new skills. I think that's really good advice. Um, wonderful. Okay, so when you each graduated, I've been asking people this question more often recently because um, I think it's kind of indicative of like what a boot camp is, um, is geared towards. So what kinds of jobs did each of you feel prepared to apply for when you graduated from Codesmith? Were you like, I'm only looking for senior engineering jobs. I am ready for like an internship. I, you know, somewhere in between had, or even certain companies, like what did you feel like you were ready to apply for? I can talk about it first. Um, so coming from 
uh, non-engineering background, um, I didn't expect myself to be ready for any kind of job, to be honest, even after Codesmith. I didn't think that I was ready at all. But looking back, um, I think Codesmith definitely prepared me as a software engineer. And I was ready, definitely ready to uh, take any jobs in mid, uh, junior to mid-level jobs and possibly some people in senior level jobs as well. Um, uh, we learn a lot, a lot of it, like we gain a lot of if, if, if knowledge and information through Codesmith. And um, back then I didn't realize because there's just like Vessi said, the, the vastness of information out there just um, is uh, it, it's going to give you a lot of imposter syndrome. And that's why you think you're not good enough. But um, not everybody knows everything. And I, I was definitely able to um, uh, get on my job and start working right away. That's cool that you kind of have that like reflection time or like hindsight to look back and say, okay, right when I graduated, I was like, I don't know what I like, I'm not prepared for anything. And then, you know, with a year under your belt, you can say, you know, I was definitely ready for like a mid level job. And like, I knew that I could hit the ground running. It's probably good advice for other people who are just starting their career search as well. Um, that compassion again. Um, did anyone else have an idea about like exactly what they wanted to like the types of jobs that they wanted to apply for when they graduated? Um, yeah, I could say that I was definitely Cosmith. I after Cosmith, I also did a um, the fellowship, which is an extension three month pro program where you teach where you could teach lectures, mentor the new residents, and give some approach lectures and do some algorithms with the residents. So after finishing the bootcamp and then also the fellowship, which was an extra three months, I definitely felt ready um, for a mid-level job. And I felt like Cosmic did a great job in preparing you for that. Um, for me, myself personally, I didn't want the stress of a senior level job right out of Cosmic because I wanted to still like go into a job and not think that they'll know like it's the imposter syndrome like i need to know everything i'm a senior engineer they'll expect me to know all this stuff so i'm like i'll be fine with my first job being mid-level and learning from there and going from there so that was my goal but uh yeah that's my experience i'll piggyback off that really quick uh Codesmith definitely just prepares you, at least for me, uh, same boat I uh, stayed on as a fellow. And I took every and any interview uh, to get exposure and practice. Did I feel ready for a senior job or senior level uh, engineer job? Uh, I, I would probably say no. However, being in final stages with a few of them showed me that I was. So it was very interesting to uh, have the, the uh, separation between what I believed and what other companies were willing to uh, to, to have me on the team for. Really quickly as well, uh, I would like to add to what Joel just said that it really depends on your situation, but also the companies you're applying to. Like my situation was a little bit unique. I have, you know, worked with Cosmet in various capacities and different projects. Um, but at the same time, it depended also on a company. So I would say definitely mid to senior level roles um, are good to you know shoot for afterwards that is a really good point as you're going through the job search like i'm sure it becomes way more clear understanding that like different companies are gonna um place people in different like levels and it totally depends on on the size of the company so many things um amazing well y'all congratulations to all of you because you're now all working in fantastic jobs it was fun to do a little bit of linkedin stalking and see what you're all up to now so vessi you were working in nonprofits before codesmith and you're now a software engineer at ibm knock you were a pharmacist before as you said and now you're a software engineer at byte dance Joelle, you were an MBA student before Codesmith. You had done another boot camp, and now you're a software engineer at Ready. And then Geo, you were working in marketing, and now you're a software engineer at Arcadia. So really cool before after stories. Um, Vessi, you're working for a you know huge established company. Knock, you're at Byte Dance. Could you could y'all tell us a little bit about your jobs now, um, the teams that you're working on, and obviously you don't have to give any 
company secrets away, but like, what's your day to day like? And what's the culture like in your company? Yeah, absolutely. So IBM is IBM. <laughs> there goes uh, a lot without saying a lot, but um, a little bit about my team and what I work on. I work on a tool that actually help marketers uh, ease their day today. And it's sort of a hub for our marketers. It's an internal tool. Um, so it's really nice to know that I'm working on a real world tool that helps someone each and every day. Um, and for someone that came from nonprofits, having that meaning and having that value uh, behind what you do every day is really important to me. Um, in terms of team and culture, I would say it would probably be different if, if we were not in a pandemic world, but obviously in the world we're in, everything is pretty much remote. So we all try as best as possible to be connected and to also leave some time for that uh, culture building. Um, we have coffee chats where we talk about anything else but work. And we also um, play games, for example, um, stay connected over Slack. Uh, but overall, I would say my team is very distributed and very global, and I enjoy that because other than that, I wouldn't have had the chance to work with these people. So um, how, how many people are like on your, your engineering team? So depending on how you look at it, it's five developers. Um, there are other team, uh, team members as well, but five developers. Cool. Is everyone working remotely right now? I'm assuming yes. Okay, cool. Um, and knock. Tell us what your day to day is like, and um, and how you got the job. Like, was it through a connection with Codesmith, or um, how did you find your job at ByteDance? Um, so, I applied to more than I would say eighty or hundred uh, positions after I graduated from Codesmith. Um, I basically went for larger companies because I thought um, the branding would um, uh, look good on my resume uh, for the future. And also uh, with the skill set that I had, um, I, I, was, I thought I was better suitable for larger companies. Um, so I probably like mostly only apply to positions at larger companies. And, um, and this particular role, um, I actually um, spam applied probably like more than 10 positions at my dance. Um, and this was one of the uh, positions that offer, uh, that I was offered an inter interview for. Um, and I, th I went through uh, their interview process was a little different from other companies because other companies had initial round of um, uh, phone screening. And then later on uh, one day of final rounds of interviews and this company, they had me go on, maybe like one uh, round of interview per week. And it lasted about like a month and a half to get through the whole thing. Um, and uh, the, the kind of work that, they, that my team does is that I work under their IT department. Um, it's interesting because uh, ByteDance uh, is better known for its application TikTok, but we have different services and platforms and to support that, um, we need a lot of internal tools. Um, and what we're building is uh, what's called an SD-WAN uh, infrastructure. Um, it's a so it's, it stands for Software Defined Wide Area Network. And it's a pretty interesting technology that all the big companies probably all need. And especially now that everything's going into the clouds and everyone working remotely. Um, but it, it's, it, it'll take too long to explain the whole thing. It's a, it's a very interesting concept. But yeah, that's the biggest uh, project that I'm working on, um, uh, along with other um, IT department uh, projects. That's cool. So Nock, you and Vessi are both kind of working on internal tools at these large companies. That's really interesting. And Vessi, how long did your application process take at IBM? Um, I would say a couple of weeks, actually. Um, it was relatively fast turnaround, I would say. Um, yeah. And, and not, okay, so, so Bessie, your team is about five developers. Not how many developers do you work with, like, day to day? It depends on how you look at it. Um, so our team is 
like 24 people, I, I believe, growing. Um, I, there, our goal is to probably get to like 50 or so. Um, but the people that I closely work with um, probably know more than 10 people. Um, and our the, the team is spread a, a lot across the globe. And because of the time difference, it's so hard to talk to everyone and get to know each other. Um, but the, like I said, the, I, I, I technically work for the Mountain View office, which is in Silicon Valley. And the, there, uh, I think there is a, uh, the, on my, the, the, my close group, um, there are about like six or seven people. Okay, cool. And Joelle and Gio, you are both working for, I guess, relatively smaller companies if you compare it to, um, to IBM. But did you both go into Codesmith like wanting to work for a specific type of company? How did you approach that? Yeah, uh, good question. Uh, absolutely not. Uh, I didn't think I was going to go through uh, Codesmith to work for a startup. It's actually funny. The, the, the two things I said to myself when graduating was I didn't want to work for a startup and I didn't want to work remote. And here we are today. So uh, <laughs> I, I think for me, um, I was interviewing during the beginning stages of the pandemic. So when I finally finished my fellowship with uh, Codesmith, uh, it was actually January 31st. So I had the full month of February and I was doing interviews and uh, I was doing the exact process that, that Codesmith has us do. Everything was going great. Mid-March, um, things changed. A, a lot of plans changed. A lot of companies rescinded uh, positions. Um, and that's where I found myself by the end of March. And I said, well, if the program is going to work, we're going we're gonna to put it to the test now. And when I went back in April and uh, just continued to apply, uh, my company, Ready Responders, a company I work for, uh, is a healthcare company. And uh, considering the, the times, they, uh, they were definitely looking to hire quickly and, and looking to get uh, new engineers uh, on board as, as quick as they can. And for me, both of my parents being first responders, uh, I, I think that was very important to kind of be able to have some sort of impact, uh, especially during this time. And I think that's what drove me to, to say, you know what, let's, let's do the startup gig, you know, let's, let's try it out. You're going to have a lot of impact. Uh, I'm on the product team. So everything that we use from internal to external is uh, worked on by us. And uh, I work with two engineers uh, daily. I think the total product team is about 25 of us per se. So uh, actually this week, we just launched our second product. Um, right now it's in the Miami market live right now as well. So uh, what taking... is that product? Like, what are you, what are you building? Yeah. Okay, good. So um, this product actually was for when you call in to make an appointment, uh, we handle that whole process for all of our uh, customers and our uh, reps. Basically, anybody that calls in, we need to make appointments, we need to integrate with a different company um, to set up the schedule for our responders, um, as well to just go to the houses, set their schedule up. Um, so we are on the front lines of uh, basically our, our company. It, without this product, uh, everything would have to be done using uh, older technology and, and a little bit more difficult, I would say, with pain points. But right now, we're making it a lot easier for our our responders to go out there, sacrifice you know their health and safety to help others to to have home care and home aid. Um, so I just seeing that launch in general from last year, uh, launching our first product to this year. It's 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 been a lot, but it's been exciting knowing that this is helping a lot of communities, especially underserved and underprivileged communities for sure. So cool, so cool. Um, and Gio, what are you working on today at Arcadia? Yeah, sure. So um, at Arcadia, it's a renewable energy tech company. So um, I'm part of the growth team, which is um, I work with two other engineers. We have a product manager and an engineering manager. And the cool thing about the growth squad is um, we we've, we've um, worked closely with the marketing team, which is um, so they're really happy that I had that dual experience of being able to understand both sides of the experience. And um, with the Growth Squad, um, we're having a complete brand refresh for our company. Uh, we just got a hundred million dollar funding yesterday, which is amazing to, <laughs> to hear, which is awesome. Um, uh, because of that, um, we're exp at first we we were just focused with consumers. Um, but now we're ex extending our offerings to businesses and developers um, 
by extending our APIs and things like that. So because of that, we're gonna uh, we're redoing our website, and I get to be part of that process, which has been a lot of fun um, with working on the marketing website with the marketing team. But also, a uh, cool new thing is that their backend is in Ruby. And in Codesmith, we learned Node and Express, so which is a different uh, backend technology. So it's been really awesome learning new technologies and um, putting it to work and creating this awesome new website and seeing it hopefully go up by, it'll be up in October-ish, November-ish. But uh, yeah, so that's been a lot of fun to work on. That's really cool. And um, I was going to ask this question next, but, and you just answered it a little bit, Gio. Are you all using like exactly what you learned at Codesmith uh, Node, obviously, or have you been learning a ton on the job? So Gio, you are learning Ruby now. That's exciting. Um, is anyone else like working in completely new technologies that they didn't even learn at the boot camp? So um, I'm also using Ruby uh, on our backend for one of the projects. Um, and in the front end, we're using React, which is um, uh, what Codesmith taught us. So um, it was great because uh, on one side, I knew the technology. And, and on the other side, I was able to uh, uh, pick up a new piece of technology. Um, it was, uh, even though it was not the same thing as Node, um, a lot of the concepts that we learned from Codesmith applied with uh, uh, Ruby on Rails as well. Um, and there are other, uh, because the, because of the project that I'm working on is uh, related to networking, there's a lot of networking technologies that I uh, had to learn about. Um, but uh, my day consists of probably like 40% of researching and learning new technologies as well. So um, yeah, I had to. I did have to learn a lot, but I also had a lot of information and knowledge from Code Smith as well. Bessie, do you feel like on the job you are learning, like using like the, exactly what you learned at Code Smith? I mean, I think this is a huge, maybe a bit of a misconception about a boot camp is that you you learn this like specific tech stack, and then like you go into your first job, and that's exactly what you're using, and you just kind of like, you know in reality you're spending so much time learning and growing even after this the you graduate so um what what's been your experience yeah exactly um i was gonna say i don't have too much uh new information to add to the conversation so far but i would say um definitely my day is in node and react we do have other technologies as well that uh you know and i think depending on what your problem is, you might probably need a different solution. So new technologies are gonna come up all the time. Um, so really it isn't necessarily about boxing yourself in a different or in the same world, but it's more about having that mindset of, okay, something might be better for this particular use case. So it doesn't necessarily matter what I currently feel comfortable in. It matters what the best solution for the problem is. So I'm gonna pick up whatever is necessary. Well, it sounds like, you know, you all went to different types of companies, different sizes and everything. I'm trying to draw some of the like similarities and differences. It sounds like, you know, regardless of how huge the company is, you're probably going to be working with like five to 10 other developers on your team um, on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, but that maybe at a startup, you know, you're able to kind of touch more parts of the application. Whereas at a larger company, you can actually like really get super deep into something like, you know, one internal tool, you know, that's helping one of the, one of the teams at your company. Um, any other differences that you can kind of see um, or that you would recommend to other students or graduates who are thinking like, should I work for a startup or like work for a super, you know, established, um, like tech giant? I would say keep an open mind. Um, I didn't think that I wanted to do this for sure in terms of a startup. However, after a little bit over a year now, uh, it's been a great experience. It, it feels almost, dare I say, like a boot camp all over again in terms of everyone um, wanting to work together and everyone uh, working on pieces together. Uh, you're right. I, I definitely think that we do touch a lot more. Um, especially that first project. I mean, it was it was uh, React front end, uh, Express and uh, Node on the back end, which made it easy uh, 
to transition in. Um, but yet I was touching everything, whether it was uh, using AWS as well. And these are things that Coach Smith uh, was teaching. So I, I think that was a major help where because the startup is very all hands on deck, uh, it, it becomes a lot, a lot more of a, I would say a fun challenge of what's this week's goal is going to be and what are you going to uh, learn this week to, to continue to improve the product that you have uh, a major stake in for sure. I guess I'll also add that um, it's a spectrum, right? Like um, I would say Joel's like seeing like he had to touch some DevOps works and things like that. And my company, when I started in May is, is I would say more of a mid-sized company. So like I'm only working on this specific, on the marketing website, for example, but there is a DevOps team, there's a billing team. So um, the thing I liked about the mid-sized companies is that it's a little bit more structure than a smaller company. Um, and like when I had an orientation, they had a whole checklist for me. So I was like, oh, thank God. <laughs> like I have like a little bit of structure, but sometimes with smaller companies, they just throw you in there. And sometimes people love that. People love to be just thrown in there and see if they could swim kind of thing. Other people, if you know, if you want more structure, definitely go for like a midsize or larger company. Um, I kind of found a happy medium where like I could um, work on different parts of the company, but they don't expect you to know everything kind of thing. I'd like to add that it also really depends on your team and what you're working on. Even in a bigger company, you could still have the feel of um, startup or camaraderie, or I am able to work on, you know, different parts of the whatever stack or technology it might be. Um, maybe a little bit of dev DevOps, maybe a little bit of security, whatever, whatever it might be. So it really depends on your team as well. Um, but I would second the point about a little bit more structure, a little bit more established processes, um, you know, depending on where you are uh, working in something like Agile or Kanban or, you know, um, giving you that structure as well, in addition to the feel of a startup, which I, I, I think is really good. Um, I think um, it really depends on the people that you work with um, because I think through interview processes, you'll be able to see if you actually will be able to get along with the people that you, uh, that you interview with. And if you do think that, then um, I don't think the size of the company matters. Um, the, uh, personally, the reason why I went for the bigger companies is like I said, I went that branding, but also because um, I thought I was more suitable for bigger companies interview processes, but um, that was like oh, probably like the only reasons that I had. Um, I, I didn't really have anything against smaller companies. And I think um, being able to touch on all the all different aspects of the business working in a small company uh, is a good um, uh, skill set to have in, under your uh, belt. And uh, it'll uh, help you grow maybe in your entrepreneurial uh, aspect or any kind of aspect in your in your future career so um it really depends on the people you work with and that's why interview process is not only getting interviewed by the company but also you interviewing the companies so um yeah go, going through the interviewing process and um getting the feel of whether you're going to belong there or not is the most imp important thing i think do Codesmith help any of y'all like figure out which company to work for? Um, obviously, you're doing like resume prep and, you know, kind of like getting ready to do those interviews. But did did you turn to them for any like advice in terms of like what offer to accept? Um, they do have. Um, so the nice thing about Codesmith is they do have hiring support even after you graduate. And it's like indefinite. I know some places it's like only up to six months or something like that. But that's the nice thing. You could just reach out to the hiring team anytime. And I remember when I was um, interviewing, I kind of kept them up to date um, more than they wanted to maybe. <laughs> like I have this going on, I have this and this. Um, but when I did get two offers um, at the same time and I was telling them how they asked me, they were actually curious of how each one went, how did I feel about each one? Like, it wasn't just about like the money, but like Knox said, it's important you're interviewing them as well. Like, how do you feel about the company itself? So then like, just kind of like talking to them about it um, was a nice way of just deciding on your own as well. It wasn't, they never told me though, like pick this one or pick that one. It was, they always just were there to support you um, with ever, 
questions or decisions you had to make? I want to echo that for sure. I, I think the support, um, they, they really mean it when they say support. And I think that um, keeping that team just up to date on everything that was going on with, with uh, hiring itself was very easy for me, um, considering they were reaching out very often, weekly, making sure everything was okay. I'm doing okay. I had the resources I need. Uh, so when I did get that offer, I did call them and I did uh, just ask more questions and just kind of clarify to make sure that uh, I'm doing everything up to their process because you know they, they have a, a proven system that works and I don't want to deviate um, from that system. So I, I think overall, it, it definitely uh, helps just keeping that support there um, for sure. Yeah, Joel, I feel like your career search and job search in particular, like really was a stress test, probably for you, but also for like the Codesmith system. Um, so glad it worked out. Well, okay, my final question, I ask everyone this, looking back on, I guess, the last year or two years, um, would you say that Codesmith was worth it for each of you? Or are you like, I probably could have done this on my own without like paying tuition to do it I didn't really need all the support like what was it worth it yes 100 uh, percent everything to that effect for sure um I it's been an absolute uh, amazing pleasure I would say going through the program and and having the support having long-lasting friends I still talk to people to this day still meet up to this day and just having that connection forever um, I, I think is one of the biggest aspects that we might not always remember, right? Obviously, the goal is to uh, learn new skills, to develop yourself. However, you're also developing your friendships and, and your bonds uh, forever. So 100%, I, I definitely agree. It's been, uh, it's exceeded my expectations for sure. Um, I would definitely echo that as well. It's 100% worth it for me. Um, like I said, I was... I think a lot of people that go to Cosmic are like in their mid late twenties, having midlife crisis <laughs> or thinking about life or some people I should say. So, um, I think, uh, I don't know where I would be without, if I never made that career change and Cosmic was definitely something I needed. I like the structure. I like the instructors, their way of teaching. And like Joel said, all the friends you make is the most valuable part in my opinion. For example, like I still went on a trip to Seattle with them. We did water rafting and things like that. So you keep those friends and then, you know, they're all at awesome companies too. And they're, they're only going to progress in their career like you are. So you could all help each other out as you move through life together. Basically, these are like lifelong relationships in the end of the day. And it's just really, it was just a really awesome experience. And like the learning part was just one part of it. Um, it's the friendships in the end. So it's definitely worth it just for that. Definitely worth it for me. I'm going to say about 98% just to have a different percentage over here. Well, let's go with that. Um, uh, why am I saying that? Because I think that to make a professional transition, the residency is definitely amazing. I've had a little bit of a unique situation as I, as I mentioned, but also in addition to that, I think it's important to point out that one still needs to put in the legwork and, you know, go through the motions of applying or getting rejected or going through everything that one needs to go through. So I'm going to, you know, give that little percentage there for <laughs> the effort that you also put in yourself after, but um, definitely worth it in terms of the tools that you're given uh, to succeed as well. Yeah, I hope anyone watching this sees that y'all have all been successful, but you also all like started with JavaScript, the hard parts, taught yourself before you, you know, maybe did the fellowship afterwards, like really kind of, I don't want to say drank the Kool-Aid, but like really put all, your all into it and then, <laughs> and we're successful afterwards. So that's cool. Knock, what about you? Worth yeah, it? Ninety-eight. Yeah, for me, it was very worth it as well. Um, was probably the best way to transition into the software engineering uh, careers. But uh, one thing to note um, for anyone who's trying to join is that um, uh, the three months of Codesmith, when it says three months, that's not the only time that you need to get into uh, and start working at a company. Uh, you'll need time to get into Codesmith and finish Codesmith. And then after you're going to have time off, like applying and going through these application processes and finally getting hired and start working. So um, 
uh, I think that's a good, uh, important thing to note um, before getting into Codesmith uh, that you will need that much time. And there's uh, also uncertainty of how long you'll be um, uh, uh, without a job after uh, Codesmith. And um, uh, anyone who's trying to get into Codesmith should know these things that beforehand. So there, there's no false hope in, in, any, in, in any aspect. Uh, I just quickly want to agree with Nock there because I think it's super important to make a plan, not just jump in and saying this is going to change everything. Um, like I made an Excel with two budget, how much savings I had. Um, and before Coastman, picking a cohort where I, I felt comfortable with the amount of savings and how much money I was going to have afterwards because you're not going to get a job right away after. So super important. Um, thanks, Nock, for that. So important. Yeah, it takes about three to six months to get a job after a boot camp. We know that just like in aggregate from from research. But uh, then, like you were saying, you know, the application process can be a month and a half long, like budget for more like three to nine months of, of the, the whole process, which in the grand scheme of things, pretty cool for a career change, but it's definitely not like a three month silver bullet. Um, okay, y'all, I could literally talk, keep you on this call for another like hour, but I think this is a great place to wrap up. So thank you so much, Vessi, Nock, Joelle, Gio, for joining us to talk about uh, your careers after Coach Smith and taking a little walk down memory lane. Um, and thanks to everyone for uh, tuning in. Let us know in the comments who you'd like to see on the ne next on the Course Report YouTube channel. Thanks, sure y'all. Subscribe.